Hey everyone, my name is Krish and I'm a fourth year medical student currently studying at the University of Nottingham. The feedback on my previous UCAT videos has been so great. So today's video is going to be all about the verbal reasoning section of the UCAT exam. If you'd like some more information about the UCAT exam in general or about the abstract reasoning section, check the links in the description below for my previous videos. So without further ado, let's get right on with the video. Let's start with an overview of what the verbal reasoning section entails. This section tests your ability to understand and interpret written information quickly. This can be useful in a scientific setting in the sense that in order for you to keep up with the latest medical and scientific news, you must read scientific papers. So you need to have skills in order to read them quickly and interpret important information. Another example of when this can be useful is if you're talking to a patient and you're taking a history, then you have to understand and interpret all of the important parts of information that the patient has told you and disregard all the less important information. So in terms of this actual section, you'll have 11 question sets each with four items, and you have 22 minutes to do this. This means that you almost have two minutes per question set. If you are confused as to what these terms mean, I would highly suggest that you watch my first video in order to get a deeper understanding of the UCAT exam. So in the verbal reasoning section, there's two different question types. Both question types will include a passage of about 200 to 300 words and this is generally on a random topic, although it can be on a topic that you've heard about before. There are two styles of questions. The first style, let's call this style one, is where you have a question set and you have a number of different items. For each item, you have to answer whether it is true, false, or can't tell. True means that on the basis of the passage itself, the statement is true or logically follows on from the passage. False means that again, on the basis of the passage itself, the statement is false. Can't tell means that you cannot tell from the information in the passage whether the statement is true or false. Style two is where you get four free text options per item. In my opinion, style two is much harder as you have four times the amount of information to judge per item. Before we move on to the strategy section, 91% of the people that watched my last video are not subscribed. Creators like me put a lot of time and effort into making videos like this, and I don't get paid a single penny for it. So I'd really appreciate it if everyone watching could smash that subscribe button and smash the like button just to let me know that you appreciate the video. So let's move on to figuring out a strategy on how to tackle these questions. Generally speaking, I'd suggest a six step strategy to tackle these types of questions. Step one is first of all, do not read the passage. I would start by reading the first item and noting the key words on that item. And the second step is to skim through the passage looking for those keywords. Once you've found a sentence with those keywords, I would suggest that you read the sentence which has the keywords in it, plus the sentence before that and after that, just so you get a full on picture on what this passage is trying to say. Step four is to scan the rest of the passage for the keyword again. Sometimes they will mention it at the start and also mention it later on. So it's important to have both mentions of that keyword fresh in your memory so you understand the context of the passage. Step five, is if you find another keyword, do the same thing again, as in read the sentence before, during and after that keyword. And step six is to choose the correct answer. So now that you have the basic strategy, let's move on to some tips and tricks. This technique of skim reading the passage improves greatly with practice. So the more you do, the better you'll get. In style two questions, you may use the process of elimination and be left with two similar options, which you can't choose between. In this case, flag the question and go with your gut instinct, as your gut instinct is almost always going to be right. The next tip is does the type of language in the statement, either being mitigating or definitive, match the passage? If it does, then it's more likely to be true or false. If the type of language does not match, then it's more likely to be can't tell. So like I said in the six step strategy, do not read the passage first. This is a massive waste of time and will hinder you greatly since the verbal reasoning section is extremely time pressured. Make sure you understand if there is just a link between two statements or if there is a causation between them. So let me give you an example of this. Scientists have found that people with a higher IQ are more likely to wear glasses. This statement demonstrates a link between glasses and a high IQ. However, it does not show any exact causation. The next tip is don't be afraid to use the can't tell option. This option is not saying that you don't know what the answer is. It's just saying that from the passage itself, 
you cannot conclude whether it is true or false. So now I'm going to put on screen a list of clue words which may help you differentiate whether a statement is mitigating or it's definitive. Pause the video here and take a note of these words if you'd like. So let's move on to the next section. I'm going to be going through a worked example with you guys. So here is an example of a question in style two. Pause the video right now and see if you can work the answers out. In exam conditions, you would have around two minutes to complete this entire question. But if you struggle for time initially, don't worry, speed comes with practice. So I hope you found that question all right. Now let's go through some of the answers. For question one, the correct answer is D. There is conflicting evidence with regards to the prognostic benefits of bariatric surgery. D is supported by the differing findings in paragraph two. The passage mentions four different types of bariatric surgery. However, it doesn't explicitly say that there are only four types. Therefore, option A is incorrect. Option B is also incorrect, as in paragraph two, it states that in a study in veterans affairs, patients found no benefits to the bariatric surgery. Therefore, it is not a reduction in mortality in all patient groups. At the start of paragraph three, it says that the bariatric surgery is currently recommended for patients with a BMI of at least 40. Therefore, option C is incorrect. Option E is also completely unfounded and not anywhere in the passage, so it cannot be correct either. Therefore, the correct answer is D. For question two, the correct answer is A. Efficient digestion is often impaired. This mainly links to the last paragraph where it says absorption, a component of overall digestion, is reduced, which supports option A. B is incorrect as the last paragraph does not support this and implies that patients do not have the appetite to overeat as a result of the side effects. These side effects include nausea and vomiting, which become problematic on overeating, making option C also incorrect. The passage states that alcohol should be avoided after the surgery. However, the exact reason is not given or implied, and therefore it cannot be option D. Option E has no mention in the passage and also seems counterintuitive given the nature of the surgery. However, an important thing to note here is not to use your own outside knowledge and just to use what is said in the passage. Question number three, the correct answer is C. Appetite is reduced after bariatric surgery. This is supported by the last sentence, which says, because patients cannot eat a large quantity of food, etc. This implies that appetite is reduced. In the first paragraph, it says gastric banding involves reducing the size of the stomach and cannot conclude if this is through the removal of parts of a the stomach. Therefore, option A is not confirmed, so it cannot be A. Option B might well be correct, but it isn't stated anywhere in the passage. This is why it's important to make sure you're only using information from the passage rather than your own knowledge. Option D is clearly contradicted by the guidelines in the passage, so that is also incorrect. Option E is again completely unfounded and not in the text, therefore we cannot select this as the correct answer. For question four, the correct answer is C. Not all patients require dietary supplements following bariatric surgery. In the last paragraph, it says, many patients will need to take a daily multivitamin pill, suggesting that many, but not all patients will need it. The other options are not even discussed anywhere in the passage, which makes them completely unlikely answers. So that just concludes this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you found it entertaining. If you did, then please smash that like button and leave a comment down below with any questions or queries, as I really do love interacting with you guys. Keep on practicing and feel free to message me on Instagram. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.